Friends, welcome back. Last time we had a chill hang, uh, I talked about the clothes that I would buy if I had unlimited money. Now it's time to flip it, zip it, and reverse it. Here is a look at the clothes that I wouldn't wear even if I had unlimited money and or if the clothes somehow gave me unlimited money. Basically, I am looking at some hot picks on Grailed that despite, despite their price tag are um, unagreeable, gross, otherwise just bad. I mean, like, I, my intention is not literally to just point out brands that I otherwise think are trash, as much as it is to find the trash among brands that I already like. So, join me today on another exciting episode, and let's just jump into it. Okay, clothes I wouldn't be caught dead wearing. So, you know, when I'm dead, assuming that there's an open casket, just make sure that my corpse isn't in these clothes, please. Make sure that they include this in the funeral. Let's get started. Roblox oof sound, am I right? Ooh. Amiri suede repair jeans. Um, I, it's like, where did they come up with that price? Uh, 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 you know, it's kind of like that thing where, I mean, I guess the value of an item is whatever somebody will pay for it, but how, uh, this looks like something that you buy at the mall from, like, not even a brand, like, from a kiosk. Oh. Next, vet Bonjour. This cardigan. You know, the reason that I, oh, wait, hold on, let's go back. The, the reason that I include this is because, while I'm not seeing the cut, you know, for, for sure high quality stuff, for sure. For sure, guys. I can't take his word, I can't take this Digimon's word, but the problem I have. and you, you might notice this sometimes a theme, is the problem I have with this one is, sure, Vetmont made its name in part by making ugly clothes, but in a lot of ways by, I don't know, sometimes being a commentary on the garment industry itself. And this is just a card cardigan that says Vetmont, which basically is like a cardigan that just says clothes on it. Bonjour. Okay. Next one, this might be more controversial, honestly. And it, it, it's easier because I genuinely like most of Capital's stuff. Um, and I've seen these hats around. These are kind of like their trucker hats. There's a lot of different variations. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, I think I saw somebody on the subway recently who I know who was wearing one of these. And I did not go up to them. I don't know if that makes me a bad person. I was just like, okay. Um, so I, I mean, like maybe these t these toe the line between like weird to being cool again. But I I think the thing that sticks out to me the most about these hats are the words themselves. Like let's just let this little ditty: love and peace and Beethoven. And ready for my German here. Heard the bird a rhyme, hurts and sins of muncha cruncha. Guti. Jeans. It seems funny. I, 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 I don't know if I'm supposed to read that and think it just looks like funny words. Probably not, but I do. Um, all I want is washing denim every morning with my shrink. See, this one almost makes me think, because like some of them seem like they're almost like broken English, like maybe 
in some way capital who's ever writing these out doesn't know English but then I see this one and it's like is this a pun what is your game anyway so if you remember my last video, I think it was like literally the last video I did. I was talking about this guy, Exhibit A. Exhibit A, if you're watching this. And um, you know, the reason I was fascinated by him is because most of the stuff I wanted to buy. Could he have owned these pieces? This is like a like $100,000 closet. And he's just flipping them like it's nobody's business. You know what's funny? I, I was hoping to the power and might of the internet he might see my video and he did. Um, he said that these are from his wardrobe. So for the sake of this video, had to find something I wouldn't want my corpse wearing. It's Lavon Lavin Times Gallery Department. Now Gallery Department um, is a brand that deserves to be lampooned in some way or another, so might as well be in this video. <sighs> The, the, the issue I take with it is, I mean, you're always gonna have brands that are like streetwear brands or brands that seem too expensive for what they're selling. And maybe that's a part of it. Maybe a part of it is trolling you, kind of like Vet Ma. But um, the, the issue I have with this is like, they pitch themselves, or at least the, uh, the liberal media pitches it as like, are they art? or clothes. And this hoodie in particular looks like the kind of thing that like the costume department at your high school would whip together for a character who is an artist to show that he's an artist in the most obvious and cartoonish manner. Next one. <laughs> this Margiela crew neck. Now, sometimes the conversation around luxury brands has to do with like the fact that um, they sell clothes that have the logos on it. Like Gucci comes up a lot. It's like, oh, I like um, Alessandro's runways, but there's all that Gucci stuff, blah, blah, blah. And then the argument is like, of course, well, Gucci's gotta get make that money. And that's a great money maker and it supports the art of it. But to, to a large extent, Gucci is always been a aspirational brand that is kind of plays into the fact that there is that recognizable branding. And Alessandro has played on that even more with all the bootlegs and stuff that happened. The thing about Margiela is that, you know, listen, I'm not the Rhodes Scholar of Margiela, but it, it, the brand was about not being like branded, it was like a secret club of recognizing it. Hence why like the, the labels were originally just blanked out and presumably meant to be cut out of the garment. Um, so don't put Martin Margiela's corpse in this one, probably. <sighs> a t-shirt that, that doesn't need any introduction. We've got Palm Angels times Valone. Uh, I just don't think this is good at all. We've got the Givenchy, Givenchy, da Vinci, Givenchy, Da Vinci, um, Rottweiler t-shirt. And this Rottweiler design has been used on sweatshirts, tops, stuff like that. And when Ricardo Tichy took over for like Givenchy and started doing these more loud designs, kind of more streetwear stuff, maybe he was kind of a pioneer. I don't know, it just is like, too big a print in my mind. And I get it, it's supposed to be very aggressive, but there's almost like something about it where it's like something that you would buy in on one, from one of those sites where they just print stuff on a t-shirt. You know, like the print is too big. Last on the list is this one. What is this? Like this is probably like Eddie Salmon era um, luster. It, it, this is what Derek Zoolander wears at the, at the end of the uh, derelict campaign. You, 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 you nerds. You're wearing what Derek Zoolander wore at the end of Derelict. This isn't good, it's, it's bad. No, I can't do this. Stop the video. I can't.
I can't go on making a video trying to rag on people for buying expensive clothes. Listen guys, don't pay attention to that thing I've had in the corner. I started this video thinking that it would be fun and playful, but it, it, with every thing that I, that I looked at, it, it's just hard to, it's just hard to justify that there's a reason to troll on clothing or people who want to wear those clothes. Because in some ways, this is a part of the process of like, of, uh, of establishing our own aesthetic and style of, of establishing what is considered beautiful or what is considered trendy or, or experimental or any of those things. It, it's hard to look at things and go, this is just objectively bad. It can be often, at least for me, it's hard to do that because in a lot of ways, my angle of looking at clothes is always trying to find the good in it because it, it, it allows a lot more opportunity, I find, to think about them in a creative manner. Just thinking that they're bad kind of turns your brain off from exploring them in more depth. And the truth of the matter is we will often, whatever is ugly now will often become what is beautiful or cool or good in some manner. And all of these clothes to some extent are typically pulling from some zeitgeist that maybe will evolve and become more relevant. And uh, it, that's the truth of it. I, I do definitely think some of the stuff on here, like I didn't even include a Philip Pline, I realize. Even if I'm cremated, don't let my ashes be in a Philip Pline urn, okay? But a lot of the clothes in here still have some aesthetic cachet. They still are doing something that is relatively significant. Maybe at the end of the day, the truth of the matter is, it's the stuff that is the most boring and the most desperate to be bland that is the most offensive. It's the clothes that try to do nothing that are the worst sometimes. And this exercise, while maybe entertaining, is, is flawed, I think. I think that, uh, there, there, there's just like a truth to the way that we evolve, how we see things as being cool or trendy or interesting. It, it, it revolves around looking at what has otherwise been disregarded. So I'm sorry. You can put my corpse in ugly clothes. That's my punishment. I'll see you guys soon. I know I haven't been making videos, I am trying to. I've honestly hit like a creative block to some extent where I just have been trying to make videos, I record a bunch of stuff and then I am like, I have to do it over. So to everybody who's watching, especially the patrons who continue to support, it's like, there is nobody I feel more guilty about every day. I wake up in cold sweats. But I, um, I think the best thing I could do is make it up to you by trying to produce some cooler, radicaler content. I'll see everybody soon.